Welcome back to another episode of the Corporate Cowboys Podcast. I'm your host, Alex. And today's proof of life is that it's Monday, December 19, 2022. Today's episode is uh, somewhat touching, I suppose. And this question comes from r slash career advice. It's asking... It's a question, so we'll read it over, whatever context they've included in the body itself, and see if we can't provide a free consultation of sorts. I usually try to keep these to around 30 minutes, and I may or may not read some comments that have been included. So they're asking here, how to stop looking at an old job with rose-colored glasses, quote-unquote. I'm leaving without anything else lined up, and even though I'm prepared, I'm starting to panic and regret. I guess when you look at an old job with rose-colored glasses, it may be, reason being might be that um, it was a job that was dead-end, I guess, that wasn't providing adequate opportunities for development or advancement you just didn't see yourself going anywhere long term with it the rose colored portion of it might be well you might have been more of a novice less experienced it might have been your first job and it being your first job there was a lot of uh, emotion to confront good in a sense that well, it's your first position in which you're making money and you're being compensated for, you know, your your effort and your contribution in terms of time and energy, and you're making money from it. So you might believe that to be a net positive over all of the accompanying negatives that might have come with it. Maybe the coworkers were assholes. Maybe the manager was fucking retarded may not yeah i'm gonna say retarded just just mentally um and psychologically not apt for the position to be a manager right maybe they're just an asshole boss you don't know but then looking back on this experience with rose colored glasses as if you never wanted to leave it or it was always a good point in your life when you might have been actually struggling at that point in your life. I guess it's just being stubborn, being uh, reluctant to view that experience any differently than it having been a good one. There's nothing wrong with that, I think. Just off top, my personal opinion is that there isn't anything wrong with having, with viewing past experiences always in a net positive light but but if this nostalgia takes too much of your time takes too much of your future energy really diverts a significant amount of your life force into you not progressing not getting ahead it could be That in itself could be a net negative, regardless of how you feel about the job. What those feelings are doing to you now could be holding you back. And you've got to learn to let go. It was just an experience. And like everything in life, it too shall pass. So you won't be around forever. And it won't be around forever. Anyways, let's get to the body of this. It's saying that uh, it includes a note, I guess. Most important parts are bolded, but would appreciate a full read to understand my situation fully. All right, so they say technically not an old job yet, but I've got only seven days of work left until the end of my two weeks. So they've, uh, they've put in their two weeks apparently, and they've already worked one of those weeks. They've got one week left. They said, I originally, I originally loved this job when I got it four years ago, but so much has changed about it. And especially in the last few months, 
it's become a job I hated. It, it's become a job I hated. Well, those are two different tenses mixed up into one sentence, but I guess they already got one foot out the door, right? So does it really fucking matter? <laughs> All right, they continue. Toxic environment, daily overtime, barely time to even eat lunch, and never have time to take the other two breaks. More workload being piled on the moment it starts to ease up, despite that we can't get it done in our scheduled time. My bosses have unrealistic expectations due to not realizing other people are cutting corners and having a problem with me taking longer since I refuse to. So they refuse, they claim to refuse cutting corners. And so the boss maintains unrealistic expectations because everyone else cutting corners uh, appears to be more productive, appears to be more productive. I think with just those two, with just those two, um, up to now, up to that paragraph, I think the situation there taking the daily overtime, I don't see nothing wrong with the toxic environment. I can't really speak on when a lot of folks claim toxicity, really, I think it's just a lack of communication and a lack of professionalism. It might not even be on on the part of uh on behalf of the employee it could be the manager who's lacking in some department uh but the barely time to even eat lunch or time to take some breaks uh legally you ought to be taking those and and just obviously like fundamentally you should be taking breaks and eating also um anytime a little bit of time, a small window of time away from uh, hard labor or just any type of labor in particular allows the brain, I'm going to say a moment, a moment to um, recapacitate and, and really take a breather itself and approach approach a task in a different state of mind from a different angle if you will um i'm not saying that uh if you don't take breaks you're worse off but i believe taking breaks are necessary are necessary to development are necessary to take a step back and evaluate um and you can drop in the comments whether you think taking breaks is for pussies or whatever. But, uh, I mean, I've had to work 12-hour days, longer hour days um, in the past. And I can attest that even when I've taken breaks, at least take some time. If you're not taking breaks, at least take time to eat. Take time to eat and take time to... Uh, I, I suppose you are taking a break while you eat. Don't eat, don't eat on the job. Again, that's that's factual. That's fact dependent, depending on where you work. So they say. They continue here. They uh, also got in trouble at work for crying privately on my lunch break because I was in pain due to an arm issue. My boss found out because a coworker came looking for me, and we usually ate lunch together. So, so what the coworker? Well, it doesn't say that the coworker snitched, but they got in trouble for crying on their lunch. I don't know. That doesn't make sense. So it sounds like an asshole move, I guess. On the you know, on behalf of the boss, it sounds like an asshole move. Sometimes I will try to side. I will try to be the devil's advocate and see it from both sides. But in this case, yeah, if the boss is writing you up for crying on your own time, it's li it's legally and literally your own time. Uh, that's just a dick boss. Uh, and then they continue, due to the daily overtime, my personal life and health has taken a hit. I don't eat right, sleep enough, drink enough water, so busy. They say here in parentheses, so busy, I forget while I'm on the clock. I can't remember the last time I exercised, which is unlike me. Oh, hold on, hold on. If they can't remember the last time they exercised, how can it be unlike you? Do you remember a time when you exercised regularly? They can't remember the last time they exercised. Come on, don't. I mean, that's, that's, uh, 
contradictory statement, but I'm assuming they just type this what on their phone. Maybe they're using it on their computer. I don't use this on my computer. It's coming straight out the phone. I get home, I lay down, and I do nothing because I have no energy. They write. I wake up, I get dressed for work, I lay down again until it's time to go because I know the day will be hell with little chance to rest. Fam, look for another job. (laughs) I am leaving this job for no reason, but I'm finding myself regretting things and wondering if I've made a mistake. If I've made a mistake in leaving? Logically, I know that's not the case, but I don't know how to stop thinking like that. I've been planning to leave for the past two to three months. I have insurance straight for the new year. I have 11 months of pay put away. Everything is budgeted so I can stretch one month's worth of pay to last two months. I left without another job lined up because I need a break. Physically and mentally, I can't just jump into a new job. But now that my final day is approaching, I'm panicking and wondering if I've made a mistake. Being unemployed is scary, even though I could survive over a year with how I've budgeted. I'm only planning to take a month off before job hunting, so I should be fine, but I'm terrified and unsure I've made the right call. You know what's going on here? You have what's called helpless dog syndrome. Look it up. I'm not fucking with you. It's a a sociological term. And as your boy here is an undergrad, has a degree in social science, I know a thing or two about research and academic papers and journals. There is a study out there called the learned learned helplessness syndrome, right? And they did this um, study on dogs, on caged dogs, right? Essentially, one of the dogs was, I believe, if I'm remembering this right, Some dogs were put into an environment where they were, (laughs) the uh, clinical term is administered electrical shocks, right? So they're effectively tased. And in this scenario, they start with uh, dogs that are given an escape route or given a way to prevent them from getting shocked, right? And of course, the exercise uh, allowed the dogs to control whether or not they experienced these shocks. Now, as the experiment progressed, they closed off escape routes. They did not allow the dogs to, uh, to gain any control or have any control over whether or not they would be administered shocks. And so they were just shocked without any, um, any, anything they could do about it. Now, they found that when these dogs were shocked and they could not control, they could not exercise any options for preventing or mitigating the shocks, they, they just laid down and took it. They laid down whimpering, crying, yelping, and they, they fucking took it, right? Over time, they learned. They learned that when they could not control the outcome, they laid down and took it. Now, the interesting part is that when they moved these dogs that had learned to lay down and take it, when they moved these dogs into a new setting where there were escape routes, there were new escape routes, And there were new options that they could exercise to prevent and and mitigate these shocks from happening. These dogs, upon being shocked again, laid down and took it. So they learned to be helpless. It's learned helplessness. (laughs) Now what to say about, uh, about humans, right? Is that over time, You learn from your environment. There's nature, there's nurture. And now if in that nature, you have moving parts that, I guess, resemble nurture, 
even if it is a net negative, this nurturing will instill a sense of learned helplessness. It's uh, like the abused spouse syndrome. You, you wonder whether or not you're doing the right thing by leaving. You wonder whether or not you're making a mistake. Now, from what it sounds like, you've got most everything, most everything set. So you can go without working for a good period of time. I would rely on that. I would depend on that. Rely on yourself. Believe in yourself. You have funds. You have a budget. Rely on yourself. I mean, that's truly how you'll know if you can spread your wings and take off. But don't look back. If you already know and you're committed to leaving, don't second guess yourself now. You've already given your two weeks. Do not take back your notice. That's necessarily going back on your word, I guess, if we're being really fundamental about it. As a professional, you would be going back on your word. Unless something in your life absolutely, materially changed your circumstances. Like, let's say you were married. Let's say your spouse dies, right? And you were a two-income household, and now you can't leave. Now you can't leave because, you know, who's, who has to pick up the slack? Who's got to pick up the slack, right? That might make some sense. I, w- I would more readily accept you rescinding your notice in such a case than you just second-guessing a decision to leave for greener pastures, to leave for better opportunity at development, something that suits you, something that is more appropriate for your professional development, which sounds like your current position is not. So as far as you second guessing whether or not you should be leaving, don't. I wouldn't. Um, If I had this client in front of me, what, what else I would want to know really is what their next step is going to be. I know they claim they can't devote any energy to looking for a job now. And I'm not saying they should be, but in that time, they expect to be a month, at least a month away from work, not doing anything before they start looking for a job. In that month, what they should be doing is reevaluating their life, reevaluating their track, their, uh, their career path, reevaluating their skills, what skill sets they possess, which ones they could develop, how long it would take, what industries would hire them, how marketable they are, that sort of thing. And these are just very preliminary questions. They don't require you putting together application packets to send to companies. I mean, at least not yet. Not just yet. But you definitely want to find how your current interests will influence your future decisions. Let's take a look at some of these comments. It says, the first comment really says, you're not making a mistake. Well, I mean, that's obvious. They're not making a mistake. And they say those conditions aren't normal or healthy. They're talking about the... uh, The too much overtime and the toxic, the quote unquote toxic work environment. Anyways, they said, that being said, we're going into a recession and not having a job lined up is taking on a lot of unnecessary risk. I've done that before, but I was in my 20s and could have just moved in with my parents if it really went south. I would start job hunting now and just tell your new potential employer, your potential new employer, You need a little time before your start date. That makes sense too. Uh, In my youth, I did the same thing. If 
I went too long without employment, crash on my parents, and then do it moving, right? But the whole time, most the whole time, I was employed and at least going to school. If I'm going to be staying with my parents, at least do them the courtesy of becoming educated, not sitting around the house. At least put, fucking crack a book and network a little bit. The next commenter here says, in the next seven days, create some goals you want to accomplish in the next month. Okay, that's exactly what I said. But this person is saying, you know, matter make those into goals, make those into actual goals. Uh, they, they write here, those types of issues don't go away by doing nothing. You have to create a plan to better yourself, which is essentially what, yeah, that's what I, what I uh, opinionated. I know this because I did the same thing before. I quit a toxic job without anything lined up to take a few months off and it became much longer. There isn't anything magical that happens when you do nothing. Yes, it was nice to be lazy for the first time in my life and feel a sense of freedom, but that eventually wears off and the same old emotions come back if you don't have a plan for greater good. Start with plans to eat better, sleep better, hydrate yourself, and do almost and also do something to push yourself, like learn a new la- learn a new language, or a skill, or get a certification. I would also set a hard date of when you should start focusing on job applications. That's pretty. I'm not going to say word for word, but thought for thought, and move for move. That person sounds like a corporate cowboy. Now, I can resonate, right? I can I can feel, I can relate to uh, our OP who was leaving a place that had no opportunities, just just a barren, just a uh, a, a desolate wasteland of a of a career position, right? So they're taking. And it's not even so much an L, right? But they're taking an intermission from working, having planned and already budgeted beforehand. They're taking an intermission from working, not even on hiatus, not even a sabbatical because they're not planning on being away that long. But the fact that they're starting with a solid month of no work, to me, does open doors to developing bad habits. If you don't go into your... um, your your own period of recuperation with a plan you ought to go into it with a plan so that whatever habits you do happen to develop are habits that help you grow are habits that make you better if those habits are cracking a book and augmenting your social skills your professional skills i recommend you do that um Geez, that was a really good comment. That really was. This next comment here says, It's a risk, but some risks are worth it. You have money saved up, so you can probably swing a couple months without a job and use this time to rest, relax, recharge, then go full focus on getting another job. Yeah, that's really straightforward. I mean, I would have been, I mean, I was a little more detailed. But that's only because I'm approaching this question from a career consultant point of view. You see, if you have any questions like this, I think this was a really great, uh, I'm going to call it a prompt, a really great fact pattern in the sense that we're given a lot of good context, um, some pros and some cons that we can give our opinion as to both of them. And if you are in a position where you think you might need some consultation. We're here for a one-on-one. You can DM us on Instagram. That's at Corporate Cowboys with a Z at the end. On the Patreon page, you can sign up. You can register for one of the tiers there that allow for questions and answering. And uh, your question, I think, we'll ask if you would like it to be a prompt. If you will uh, let us use it as a prompt for an episode here on the Corporate Cowboys podcast. And if not, then it's private between you and between us as your consultants. If you want to shoot us a donation, 
I don't know, one, five, five million dollars, uh, by all means do that. There's some links that are floating around for a PayPal cash app, a Venmo. And um, uh, snail mail obviously is encouraged and greatly appreciated. It's welcomed. Um, you can send it, uh, what, like first class or something? I don't, I don't know if you want to make it that official, but it's P.O. Box 3372. Rancho Cordova, California, 95741. Now, let's, um, yeah, if, if you or a friend, an associate, find yourselves in need of some corporate work, a corporate opinion, a corporate perspective, that's what we're here for at your service. The next comment here says read back everything you wrote, read it several times if necessary. Your job is bad for you in so many ways. You've done the right thing, taking care of yourself. When you walk out on that last day, the feeling of relief will be enormous and you'll know it's the right thing for you. Yeah, I think this is pretty much positive reinforcement. Uh, I think having them go back and read everything they wrote, reading it several times if necessary, uh, doesn't really drive the points home. If anything, don't even go back and read what you wrote. What you wrote is just a bunch of... um, it's it's a, a bunch of fence sitting. You're sitting on the fence after having committed to jumping over it. So don't do that. Just finish. Just follow through with the motions. Walk out, you know, jump over the fence and um, prepare yourself for what's on the other side. You see, I'm not even guaranteeing it's going to be greener pastures. Somebody is saying in here that a recession is on its way. A recession is on its way and that could impact whether or not they get employment and that it might be a lot of unnecessary risk they're taking on in this day and age. Who knows? Who knows if it goes up, down, left, right, sideways, or fucking loop-de-loop, right? Wolf of Wall Street. (laughs) One more comment. One more comment here. Uh, Two more, maybe two more. It says here, I don't think I've ever done that, left a job without a new one. Maybe you could go to school over the next year and then get a better one. You see, that's a good approach to uh, educating oneself, to to retooling and retraining if necessary. But like I said beforehand, even going to school requires a plan. You want to find what your interests are, your current interests are, in order that they can inform your future decision. That includes academic. That includes academic. (laughs) <laughs> I feel like um, a lot of folks, I mean, and this doesn't just relate to careers in corporate, but a lot of folks, even high schoolers that are coming out of school, out of public education, aren't really given a plan, aren't really taught how to plan, right? So like they leave public education educated in the sense that they can follow direction and that they can be entry level, an entry level employee, you know, just knowing how to read, having basic literacy and arithmetic. But public school doesn't teach us how to be self aware, how to be tactically aware, right? How to negotiate risk, how to uh, navigate life challenges in that sense especially with education because these are young and impressionable individuals then relying on figures of authority and if these figures of authority are pushing on them the idea that going to a four-year institution is the next logical step then it necessarily short circuits the student's logic pattern and supplants it with that of the institution. That's the definition of institutionalization, is it not? (laughs) And institutionalization could also, it, it is also present in corporate to an extent. This is a corporate world. 
And it's learned, right? It may not always be learned helplessness, but it's learned behavior. One more comment here, one more comment. It says, I think, I think it really depends on where you are in life and a career. It is challenging to find employment when not currently employed, but not impossible, of course. Your mental health is important nonetheless, and you need to make sure when you are on the employment break, you have a structured daily routine. It is so easy to really not do much and stay in a rut. I know it was for me. I suggest exercising, getting out of the house, reading for pleasure, and very important, reach out to one potential new employer every day. That's, yeah, it's the equivalent of, of baby steps. But consistency, what this individual is writing on is consistency, being consistent. Don't, uh, being consistently active, we'll call it. Don't be consistent, you know, I don't know, resting or consistently passive or just sluggish, just lethargic, sloth every day. Nah, you could be consistent working towards developing yourself, retooling yourself, like I said, retraining, planning, and plotting on your next move until it is time to move. Now, this person went ahead and said to reach out to one new employer, one potential new employer every day. But I guess if you're taking that first month to, to look within yourself and what you want out of life professionally, then I think at the beginning of your second month, you could incorporate everything you have done in the month prior and add add that one additional step that one building block every day taking one step in the right direction to apply to one potential new employer every day and at the end of the second month you'll have at least 30 applications under your belt and from there it's necessarily we could call it a numbers game, but it doesn't have to be if you know how to do it right, which again, if you need that, that's another episode. That's another episode. If you need help with any of that, you can reach out to us. We'd be more than happy to sit down with you uh, over a call or correspond with you, write to you back and forth and interact. Our rates are very reasonable, especially for today's uh corporate war you could call it everybody's out for themselves but ultimately quote unquote we're in this together moving up becoming better and doing better it's for the sake of business have yourselves a great week we'll catch you next time